65-62. Third place won by South Central. They beat Mount Olive 59-54 in the championship. Went to Patoka. They beat St. Elmo Brownstown 59-56. The St. Anthony Tournament. The seventh place game went to Oka Valley beating Chicago Corliss and two overtimes 41-37. Fifth place won by Matt Toon beat Champaign St. Thomas Moore 74-52. The third place went to St. Anthony over Bree Central 54-52 and the championship won by Effingham over Robinson 73-67. The Westland Lebanon Tournament Nashville over Columbia 46-38 and Westland beat Father McGivney 75-20. The Vienna Classic, Cobden over Galatia, 78-73 in two overtimes. Century beat Carrier Mills, 75-59 in El Dorado over Vienna, 68-38. Girls basketball, the Hamilton County Tournament Saturday. Hamilton County beat Weber, 44-16. Wayne City over Galatia, Thompsonville, 28-24. Lawrenceville, a winner over Pingneyville, 39-26. Weber beating Wayne City, 31-29. Lawrenceville, a winner over Galatia, Thompsonville, 56-15. And Pinckneyville over Hamilton County, 44-39. The Robinson Tournament, Charleston beat Mount Carmel, 52-34. And Guerin Catholic, they beat Fairfield Lady Mules, 41-35. The Salem Tournament, it was Altoff over Centralia, 50-40. Belleville East over Carlisle, 73-34. Pacific Memorial, 70. And Salem, 19. The seventh place game went to Centralia beating Carlisle, 54-32. Fifth place went to Belleville East over Altoff, 64-50. Third place... Tutopolis beat Salem 65-29 in the championship game. Went to Civic Memorial as they beat Highland 57-45. The Harrisburg Tournament, it was Anna Jonesboro beating Carmi White County 52-50. Harrisburg over El Dorado 66-48. The Nashville Tournament, Freeburg beat Mascuda 36-35. Nashville 54, Collinsville 49. Malvern and Lady Rams a winner over Westland 43-36. And Oakville over Benton. 37 to 25. The seventh place game went to Mascuda. They beat Westland 53 48. Fifth place went to Benton over Freeburg 32 29. And the third place game, it was Collinsville beating the Malvern and Lady Rams 44 33. 44 to 33, the final score there. And the championship, Nashville. They beat Oakville 36 34. High school wrestling from Saturday, it was Waterloo beating Fairfield 54 30. And Fairfield then beat Centralia. The final score there, 47-34. That's Czech Sports for you. On this Monday morning, I'm Mark Wells reporting. Saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Merry Christmas from the Piper family and the team of Barb, Marsha, Karen, and Brandy at Guy Wood Insurance, 1400 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Time now to check the area weather forecast. And this morning it's underwritten by Home Source Warehouse and they're located in Mount Vernon. Monthly financial support of local Christian radio is provided by Home Source Warehouse in Mount Vernon. Located four miles north of Mount Vernon on Route 37, Home Source Warehouse House offers a warehouse full of quality furniture and mattresses with legendary service. Open Thursday and Friday 10 to 6, Saturday 10 to 3. You can find them on Facebook and their website is homesourcewarehouse.net. Their phone number is 204-5515. Home Source Warehouse, where style is affordable. Well, rain all day today. Periods of rain, thunders possible today. And depending on where you live in southern Illinois, rainfall may reach one inch. And we'll be up around 56 for the high temperature today. Clear skies tomorrow, beautiful day tomorrow. High of 63, clear on Wednesday, high of 50 right now in the area. Carmi at 48, Benton 50, Mount Vernon 49, Fairfield 49, and in Wayne City right now it is 48. And good morning, and welcome back to the Vine Morning Show. Here we are on this rainy Monday morning. I'm Mark, and thanks for tuning in to 105.5 90.9 The Vine. And you may be watching on our live in-studio camera this morning as we're video streaming live on our website at wvyn.org. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark, and you saw the wave from Laura. Laura, good morning. <laughs> good morning. It's good Mark. to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. And how was your weekend? We were um, uh, busy yeah. one, wasn't it? Well, yeah. you know, Thanksgiving just sent us in all sorts of directions. Sure. And uh, we had family in from Colorado and and 
it was it was just extra special. It really was. Yeah, you know it it uh, was a busy weekend, mm-hmm. and now we're back to work and back to school. Yes. And yes. on a dread on a on a rainy Monday. Yes. Right. Yeah, we've had all those good days, and yes. Now we're not having good days with weather, and it's kind of like hmm, I miss them. <laughs> we're we're ready for <laughs> yes. yeah yeah but, but hey that's just part of the change in the season it you know. sure is and it's yeah. okay uh, that's so. right hey, it's good to see you and uh, we're going to focus on psalm 91 today yes right? now you know if you've been listening to me that that is just a favorite chapter of mine and and my sister wrote it on our wall and it's on like a four by 12 piece and you know you walk in it's like oh wow mm-hmm. wow you know that is such uh, a good there's a book called Psalm 91 yes. out and when when Sherry was sick uh, and we were in the Metro East uh, a couple of real good friends of mine uh, from the Alton area who are uh, police officers mm-hmm. came to visit her and brought her that book oh good and she read that and I tell you what after she read that I read it good. and you don't realize just how important that chapter in Psalm that chapter yes. in the Bible is yes how important it yes. is. I couldn't agree more. And I've not read that book. Oh, it's great. But you know what, Mark? I'm glad you said that because that hearing about that book, I believe, I was trying to think, where, Laura, where did you get so Mm -hmm. um, zoomed in on Psalm 91? And I believe that was it, is when I heard a preacher speak on it and tell about it. And it it, it captivated me. Mm -hmm. And then isn't it funny, whenever you get interested in something, then you start hearing about it here and there and yonder. And pretty soon it was implanted in my brain and I believe. Oh yeah. I do. I do too. You know, it wasn't that I didn't believe, Uh but I really believed it after you read it. And it's like, and it was funny that you, you, you sent me that message and you were going to talk about it today because yes. we were just talking the other day that we want to re- reread Psalm 91 really? again. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And because, you know, it always goes with when you read something in the Bible, you go back and read it later, you pick up something different from yes, it. Yes, you do. Absolutely. And that, you know, um, I was thinking a few weeks ago, I'm so crazy in love with this Psalms 91 that I, I think I would like to teach it. Mm-hmm. And that thought just, you know, flipped through my mind. Mark, I'm not kidding you. That very morning, I went to the grocery store. My buddy Cheryl, the have a blessed day. Mm -hmm. uh, She goes, you know, there's this lady that that randomly gives me books occasionally. And this one is called Psalms 91, God's Shield of Protection. And she goes, it's a workbook. And I just thought maybe you'd like to have it. And Mm -hmm. I'm like... I just stood there in awe. Yeah, I mean, sure, you know, sure. and you have certain people in your life that you just really feel like they're connected to God, mm-hmm. you know, and when she handed that to me, I mean, I almost busted out laughing. It's just like, no way, <laughs> no way. And she said, you could just have it or you can pass it on. You can, you could fill it out, mark mm-hmm. in it. And I'm like, okay, I'm a mark it up person. Mm-hmm. My Bible mm-hmm. is oh, marked yeah. up. Yeah. I mean, my kids, when they first realized I was doing that, they thought I was you know, sinning. Sure. Mom, sure. Yeah. Why you're are you writing in your in the bo- Yeah, on the Holy Bible. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you know what? It's a very personal yes. thing. And I believe if something touches you and you want to highlight it, and, you know, I learned it from my grandma, Care. I would sit mm-hmm. next to her in church, and she would mark down the preacher and the date and... You know, I, sure. There's nothing wrong with that. I highlight nothing. it. I mark in it. I do underline. You? Okay. And we both, we uh, Sherry and I both do that. Okay. So yeah, All there's right. nothing wrong with that. And you know, when you grab someone else's Bible, that's what you go to first, isn't mm-hmm. it? What did it mean to them? Mm-hmm. You know, what did sure. what did sometimes I uh, see a scripture and it reminds me of somebody, and I'll write their name mm-hmm. next to it. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just kind of it kind of gives some depth and it adds some things. But mm-hmm. um, if you're not familiar with Psalm 91. I want to start out and read this to you. And it's just one chapter, obviously, so it's, you know, it's not too many verses, but let me, let me just read it. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you. Oh, Mark, I love this part. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, 
nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. I love this part too. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, if, if, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Hang on to that one. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Mm, yeah. That's good stuff, That is Mark. very good. That is very good. And there's pieces of that that sticks out to me more than others. And then sometimes other parts of it mm -hmm. will stand out to me more than others. Um when I was reading this book, oh, great cat. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, there. isn't that awesome? Yeah, yeah you just noticed that. I just that. noticed yeah. that. Yeah, that so. was brought in this morning. Yeah, okay. that came from and it's our been announced. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So Casting Crowns is yeah. like a... Yeah, we got a big banner know, in here. Yeah, right. six yeah. feet tall over yeah. here yeah. to my left. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, who's that? Oh, that's a big, uh, yeah. that's a big banner. It, it sticks <laughs> out. It looks like our poster we've got on our website. It's a banner. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that's awesome. That is great. That's going to be wonderful. So anyway, you know me. I'm easily distracted. Mark. So I'm just kind of like a puppy dog or something. Oh, wow. What's that? Um, but anyway, at the beginning of this book, it talks about this young lady that's getting ready to go to East Africa. And she was sitting under the teaching of this lady. And they got to talking uh, to another friend. And she says, so you've been sitting under the, the teaching of, um, actually, it's Angelia. And I guess she's taught you about Psalms 91. She goes, no. She goes, you mean to tell me you've been sitting under her teaching, you're getting ready to go to East Africa, and she's not taught you about Psalm 91. She goes, no, she hasn't. And here's what this third lady said. She goes, well, she must hate you then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if yeah. she hasn't taught you about Psalms 91, she must absolutely hate you. She teaches, teaches everyone about this. So anyhow... Uh, this little gal getting ready to go to Africa approaches her about it, and oh my goodness, yes. Then it just starts unfolding. Mm -hmm. And she talks about, you know, um, Psalms 91, there are many people that have taught it and read it, and they look at it more as just comforting words versus a covenant of protection. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at it, don't that's, you, Mark? Yeah, that's exactly how we looked at it, yes. Okay, exactly. all right. And it took that book opening yes. back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that, that's God's protection over our, our life. Yes. No matter what you're going through. If you're going through yes. a, a serious illness, you're going through battling depression, right. that's, that's what that's all about. Right, yeah. I agree. And she made some comments in her book how they often try to downplay the meaning of the words to comfort rather than um, a bold assurance of the protection available for those who dwell in the secret place. And she talked about different ones through time that has that has gained strength from Psalms 91, Corey Ten Boom. Mm -hmm. She's just a hero of all of us that knows her story. The lady's amazing. Um, here's another big one. Little House in the Prairie, Laura Ingalls Wilder. Mm -hmm. Yes, she uh, took great comfort in Psalms 91 also. And that was my favorite story mm -hmm. growing up, mm -hmm. Little House of the Prairie. That was mm -hmm. my favorite TV show. And it really, you know, in a lot of ways, it, it kind of is. Um, but this cover, covenant of protection, it first of all, it has to be discovered by you personally. It cannot be something that you just read and just slough over. you got to let it soak in, mm -hmm. don't you, Mark? You sure do. you got to understand mm -hmm. the importance of it. And you were at a desperate time with Sherry. That was very, yeah, uh, when I reflect back and everything, that was very desperate. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, she uh, at one point in time thought I was going to lose her. Yes. And that yes. book that Dustin and uh, they brought over, uh, and uh, they brought over, 
to the hospital at that time became very important at that stage. I bet. I bet. It mm-hmm. carried you through. Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And knowing that these things are available to us, um, to these people that are taking it personally as their own personal testimony. And it says here that there are churches who have never heard one lesson on Psalm 91 and preachers who have preached a lifetime without ever preaching this passage. Oh, my goodness. She she says at the end of her book, your church must hate you if you've never been told about Psalms mm. 91. And, and that book that we came about, again, was a couple of uh, friends in law enforcement who work for a uh, police agency in the Metro East, Dustin and Jeremiah. They've read that book because they're under such pressure yes. as law enforcement officers. Absolutely. And they got the they got the the protection over their life from reading that book yes. they could feel it after Ooh, reading that book I got chills. and that's why that's they brought good. it to me and to sherry for her to read and just to show that that prote- god's protection will be over her life yes. no matter what the situation was yes, at that point absolutely oh that's good stuff and, and again it felt like a healing intervention at that point. Oh my goodness! Too. I believe that. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, this writer puts it as God's umbrella of protection, and that's what you just said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. And you got you've got to know the scriptures, and you have to mix the scriptures with faith. With faith. And uh, I want to tell a story of um, this is just a testimony from what people have gained from Psalms 91. This is a great little story. This lady said, Dad had a secluded secluded place on the lake near Brownwood where he would take us to fish. One of these outings proved to be more eventful than others. It had been a beautiful day, but by the time we had finished our fishing, we were heading toward the cove. Everything changed. A storm came up upon the lake, and suddenly there was no time to get back to the boat dock. The sky turned black, lightning flashed, and drops of rain fell with such force they actually stung when they hit us. The moments later, we were pelted by large, marble-sized hailstones. She said, I looked and I saw the fear in my mom's eyes and I knew we were in danger. Isn't that what you do? You look at mom and dad's eyes and you see, okay, how bad is this? (laughs) Before I had time to wonder what we were doing, dad had driven the boat to a rugged shoreline of the only island on that lake. Although boat docks surround the island now, back then it looked like an abandoned island with absolutely no place to take cover. Within moments, Dad had us all get out of the boat, and he ordered all three of us to lie down beside our mom on the ground. He quickly pulled the canvas tarp out of the bottom of the boat, and he knelt down on the ground beside us and thrust the tarp over all five of us. Lightning flashed, and the thunder rolled. But I could think of nothing other than how I felt to have his arms around us. Woo, isn't that great? There was a certain calm that is hard to explain under the protection of of a shield my father had provided. Mm -hmm. In fact, I never felt as safe and secure in my entire life. I I remember thinking that I wish the storm would last forever. I didn't want anything to spoil the wonderful security I felt that day. There in our secret hiding place, feeling my father's protection all around me, I never wanted it to end. Woo, Mm -hmm. isn't that good? And she went on to say a little more. Although I have never forgotten that experience, today it is taking on new meaning. Just as Dad had put a tarp over to shield us from the storm, our Heavenly Father has a secret place in His arms that protects us from the storms that are raging in the world around us. The secret place is literal, but it's also conditional. In verse 1, God lists our part of the condition before he even mentions the promise including included in his part. That's because our part has to come first. In order to abide in the shadow of the Almighty, we must choose to dwell in the shelter of our Most High God. Mm. 
Oh, my goodness. Isn't that a great that story? That is great. That is awesome. And, yeah. you know, you think about that when life is really pelting you a good one and, and storms are moving and zooming and, and you just are so scared. I, I often envision myself in the feathers of God, just just kind of mm. running up. And, and there's another story in here about um, there was this hawk and, and there was this mama chicken and, and all of the babies were running around the barnyard. And did she start running to all of them? No. She starts clucking mm -hmm. and clucking and clucking and she has her, her arms out and her feathers out wide. Cluck, 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 cluck. Danger, 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 danger. Mm -hmm. And all of them come running and then she closed her feathers in around him. Mm -hmm. And for order, in order for that hawk to get those babies, they would have to go through the mama first mm -hmm. in order to get to them. Mm -hmm. And we've got to look at that. We've got to recognize that, that God has these big white arms and these big feathers and, and, and his, and his big prayer shawl is to lead on. And we can just, you know, nestle up to him, just get right up underneath that and be protected by him. If we'll take that protection, mm -hmm. if we'll know it's available and grab hold of it, like it's ours. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's exactly right. With Laura this morning here on the Vine Morning Show, we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about Psalm 91 when we come back as we are heading in to the 9 o'clock hour. It's Monday morning. More to come. The Vine Morning Show continues on Real Life Radio. This is your home for best Christian music. WVYN, Blueford Wayne City, Fairfield, Mount Vernon. And now on Translator, W288CO Centralia, broadcasting at 105.5. A service of Real Life Radio Foundation. The best Christian music, 90.9. As a financial advisor, John Reynolds is well-versed in the best practices of financial planning. But as a local, raised in Wayne County, he's more than experienced with the unique challenges you face every day. After growing up here, he's now returned, investing back into the community that contributed to his success, passionate and committed to helping you with yours. FNB Asset Management. We're here to help. This is Uncommon Moments with Super Bowl winning coach Tony Dungy and his wife Lauren on their Uncommon Marriage Adventure. Available now in paperback. One of my favorite scriptures, Ephesians 5, 31 and 32. A man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united as one. The marriage, that's just an illustration 
of the way Christ and the church are one. And it took me a little while to figure that out, but that's awesome because what he's saying in verse 32 is Christ was married to the church. He came to be the bridegroom of the church and he's the perfect groom. So men, we can look to Christ and get these answers about what we should do in our marriage because that's exactly what he's done for us. The Uncommon Marriage Adventure by Tony and Lauren Dungy. Now available in softcover from Tyndale Momentum. More info at CoachDungy.com. That's CoachDungy.com. Good morning and welcome back. It is 9.05, the Vine Morning Show on a Monday morning. I'm Mark and those tuned in on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine, or you may be watching on our live in-studio camera this morning on our website, wbyn.org. Thanks for tuning in. As every Monday, we're with Laura, and Laura's with us uh, this morning, and we're focusing on Psalm 91. And there's just so many things, Laura, that we can discuss in Psalm 91, and so many yes. stories that, that surround it that people have. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, um, while I'm thinking of it, I want to encourage people Get Psalm 91 in front of your eyes. And I don't care if you have to hand write it out. Um, I've typed it out and passed it out to people. And, and like I said, it's, it's on my family room wall, huge. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a, like different things that you can get. I'm looking in this book and there's um, little um, oh, carpet pieces. What am I trying to say, Mark? Carpet oh, uh, uh, like Carpet a uh, mat. Mat. Yeah. Oh, that was a tough one. <laughs> yeah, 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 a mat. <laughs> yeah, like mm -hmm. a mat. And, yeah. and it, it's really cool. It says Psalm 91 on it. And, you know, there's magnets for your refrigerator and coffee mugs. And, and I'm telling you what, people, if you just have that flashed in front of you, it helps to keep it in your mind. I've memorized it. Now, I know that I kind of mix things around and I may not get it just to the perfect order but for the most part I have it memorized and I paid my kids $25 to memorize it <laughs> <laughs> and it was worth every penny every Mark. Penny. I bet it was. It really was yeah, yeah. and I just want that to be so deep down in them mm -hmm. that they will grab that chapter whenever they're in a great time of need or a little time of need sure. you know um, and it, it, I love this workbook. Now I'm not a workbook person really but I do like the questions and I don't fill it out and answer the question mm -hmm. I just don't do that that's just not me but I do like the questions because they they're thought-provoking and one of them that I highlighted in pink says how can I dwell deeper and you know that's the one out of this whole page that stuck in my mind how can I dwell deeper you know mark if we want more if we want to um, be greater for God do greater things then we're gonna have to do some greater things mm -hmm. to get there mm -hmm. and you know I always try to read a Proverbs most days a, a chapter my father-in-law always said there's one for every day and that's a that's a good little life lesson for us to to pick up it, it's gonna help you yes. one Proverbs every day every day of the month and um, you know, we, we've got to absolutely incorporate these things. If we want to grow in God, if we want to want to stretch, if we want to do more, then it starts with us mm -hmm. because we've got to do something different. It's true. Um, and I'm just going to encourage you all, memorize Psalm 91. I mean it, people. Memorize it. It'll take you a few days, but it's worth every second that you'll spend. On. And you know what? I just dare you. I dare you to write it up on your wall because it will change your life. It's on um, the what would we call the load-bearing wall, mm -hmm. the, that main wall through the center of my home. And I didn't really mean to put it there, but I'm glad I put it there because I think that that says something, mm -hmm. that this Word of God anchors our home. And whenever I am weary, I'll look back at that. And sometimes when I'm just sitting down, which doesn't happen very often, but when I'm just sitting down on the couch, I'll just glance up at it. And it speaks to me every single time. Mm -hmm. I may not read the whole thing, but even the, the part that I focus in, I'm telling you what, people, there's something extraordinary, special about Psalm 91. There really, really is. Um, in this workbook... It has this page, and it's called Mouth Problems. And you know what? Whenever we want to declare something, whenever we want something, we want to call upon God's Word, we need to check ourselves. Where are we at? Where are we at? And there's these little balloons, and I'm going to read what it says in these little balloons. One says, cussing. 
Do you, do I, have the problem of cussing as a mouth problem? Do I have the problem of speaking doubt? You know, every thought we think, Mark, every word we speak can be lifting us up or it can be tearing us down. Mm -hmm. Criticism. Is that coming out of our mouths often? Criticism? That's an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. We can always fall back to that criticism. What's hard to do is finding the good in people. Finding the good in the... You just told me about something a few minutes ago that you could have looked at as a, oh, I really don't want to do this. I'm sick of doing it. No, you didn't. I didn't hear one negative thing come out of your mouth. You're like, yeah, I got time. I can take care of this. I can... I can handle this, and mm -hmm. and you. Just, it's all about attitude, isn't mm -hmm. it? I think it is. Yeah, it, it really it, it is. is. And they even say it's ninety percent, um, ten percent what happens to you, and ninety percent your attitude mm -hmm. on how you're going to handle it. That's right. Um, self accusations. Oh my goodness. Verbal abuse. You know we can verbally abuse ourselves too. Mm -hmm. Do you do that? I mean, I'm I'm thinking all of you out there. Do you stand in front of the mirror and verbally abuse yourself? That is not good. God wouldn't want that. Mm -hmm. I've done it before, mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. many times. Oh, Laura, you ate too much. Oh, look, you look like a hog, you know. Sure. <laughs> or, you know, or you've got this, or you've got that. And, and, you know, you just, it's so easy to fall in that trap, but it's bad. And we don't realize it till after it's happened, and then right. we, we think, oh, why did I do that? Right, exactly. It's so silly. You know, whenever you look at a magazine and you see all that perfection, that perfection's not real, people. It's not. And we've got to... We've got to remind ourselves that those perfect little living rooms, those perfect little family rooms, and the hot chocolate and all that stupid stuff that just makes you think, oh, my life, my life's junk. <laughs> my life's not great. They're, they're having a great life, and I'm not having a great life. Or you look at this beautiful model, and I've said this before. You know what? It may not even be her real feet. It may not even be her hands. And they may have her duct taped under that to where she looks 15 pounds smaller sure. mark isn't it awful it is it is but, but we're it, it's implanted in our mind to believe that it is and you know sometimes we can be so naive in a gullible world yes. because we do there are things out there that make us gullible for right. this or that right and it, it throws us into this utter destruction because we're believing something that's not mm -hmm. even true mm -hmm. It's just, it just had to be true for a split second when they clicked that camera. Mm -hmm. That's all it had to be true for. Well, you know, here's an example. You, you see these perfectly made sandwiches on television. Oh, help me. And, <laughs> you know, they're, they're stacked high. They're, they're yeah. thick. And then you go to, <laughs> you go to a restaurant and you order the, what you saw was on a picture. Yeah. It comes to you and you think, well, that didn't look like the picture I saw. It's a similar thing, the same You're thing. right. It's real life. Yeah, it's real life. Life. Without yeah. the lighting yeah. and without the spray, that it, mm -hmm. you wouldn't even want to eat that sandwich because it probably has glue on it and ugh, yeah, ugh, yeah. food yeah. coloring. Exactly. Well, more food yeah. coloring than they normally put yeah. in it. I mean, all sorts of things. But it it takes us to a, um, it's make believe. Mm -hmm. It really is. But it can pull into our life and really cause us problems. So that was a huge rabbit t trail. But you know, I'm I'm. I'm good for rabbit trails. Uh, cynical remarks. Mm. Oh, mm. my. Guilty. We all are. Yep. If you can't raise your hand on that one. No then, kidding. Then I question. <laughs> I have to ask you, well, uh, okay. Your truthfulness. Your, yeah, your truthfulness yeah. about it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we can all raise our hand on that one. Oh, and here's the big bomb. I save this for last. Judging others. Oh. Yeah. You know, and you know, it... I read somewhere, I don't even remember if it was in this book or not, but I read somewhere, try to go one day without speaking negative, mm -hmm. without saying anything ugly, anything smart aleck, anything um, judging, anything out of it. Everything that comes out of your mouth for 24 hours is wholesome and it's upright and it's good. Even if somebody makes you mad, all you can do is bless them. Mm -hmm. Mark, you think we could do it? You know, that's like fasting, you know, Yo, fasting, you know, that's, that's fasting, right. you know, you that's could put, you could put them side by side yeah. and they're both hard. They're yes. both hard to do. You are right. That's brilliant. You know what? We ought to go on a mouth fast. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to work on that. Our ladies group is meeting tomorrow night, um, for kind of an outing 
and I'm going to try to remember to ask them, hey, let's all go on a mouth fast. Ooh, that's a good idea. And, you know, here's another thing, you know, for fun, you know, play play along. We all collect pennies. Anytime you, you uh, can't something oh. negative come out of your mouth, put a penny in a jar or something. Oh. That dad up in a hurry. <laughs> that probably, would. Probably. That would. That's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. You know what? And that would be a good thing even to do for kids. Mm-hmm. Like Blaze and Lucy. Lucy's 10. Blaze is 13. And there's moments. Mostly they get along. They love each other. Sure. They play together. They do fine. But they're getting at these moments where they're learning these little pot shots. Mm-hmm. You know, and your mama and all this crazy stuff that kids do. And you know what? Wouldn't it be interesting to get a glass jar Put it on the table. When you say something nice, Mama's going to put a quarter in yeah, there. Yeah, quarter. You yeah. know? You ain't, ain't loose change. Yes. Yeah. And when you say something ugly, I get to take that quarter away. Mm-hmm. Spend it on myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Put them under the test. Yeah. yeah. And if they do something really, really great, like um, like Lucy will be like, Blaze, she said, I, uh, I folded your clothes for you and I put them away. Ah. Oh. You know, that might even get a dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, some kind, random act of kindness that they do. And sometimes it's harder to do those things for the people that you live with. Sure. It's easy to do it for your friend or your buddy or or somebody, your neighbor or something. That'd that'd be good for a family that uh, that gives allowances out to their children. Yes, right. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a little game. Yes, yes. And you're going to be rewarded for anything that you do not say that's negative. Right, right. Yeah, and I mean, you know, that's something that could be done, like you, you know, mentioned. Yeah, that's yeah. That's great. I mean, I could see Blaze coming up to me with his finger on his mouth. Mom, I want to see something really mean. I'm like, don't yeah, do it. Yeah. I'm going to put a quarter in. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Blaze loves money. Yeah. My brother calls him Alex P. Keaton. He's a little bitty <laughs> thing, and he's always thinking about money, yeah. how he can get some. And, sure. You know, um, but you know, it's that's not funny. like over the top. Yeah, but yeah, sure. he, he is definitely an Alex P. Keaton. So anyway... <laughs> But mouth resolutions, let me read you the good bubbles, okay? Praising God. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. If you can't think of anything good to say on your own, just start praising God. Praising Him for the day. Praising Him for your breath. Praising Him for your health and and, and for this holiday season. And and praising Him for the vine. Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. Um, Fervently praying. Mark, how many times are we just sending up pathetic little puny prayers? Guilty once again. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Um, Remember, I was telling you about Ratna, our Mm -hmm. friend in India. He says, now they pray, and they pray on their knees, and they pray fervent prayers with with crying and tears. and, And I'm like, wow, how often in a week's time, in a month's time, in a year's time, do we pray very fervent prayers Nothing like them. Nothing, no. Nothing at no. all. No. And you know why? They don't have anything. Mm-hmm. We rely on our wealth, on our homes, on our cush, on our comfort. You know, he told me, a, I think it was a year ago. Now, I will tell you, I'm still learning to communicate with him, and I don't always get everything right. But I think it wasn't much more than a year ago that they had, had struggled even for food. Mm-hmm. And he told me the other day, he said, my wife and I have prayed many, many prayers with crying. He says, I remember one time when we had no food and we were hungry and we cried out to the Lord and cried out to the Lord for food. Mm-hmm. And they got it. And they got it. They got it. But can you imagine? I mean, we cry out to God for some of the most frivolous, shameful things, don't we, Mark? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, my. I think about the things I've asked for in my life, and then I think about the things that Ratna has asked for in his life, and it makes me sick. Mm -hmm. makes me sick at myself. Oh, my goodness. Um, Here's another one, verbalizing trust. You know, just like in that story how the dad pulled the tarp over the kids, he loved that his kids had trust in him. And don't you love it when your kids, I trust you, Mom. Mm -hmm. I trust you. I Mm -hmm. trust you to tell me the truth. I trust that you'll do this for me, Dad. Sure. Woo! That is a such an esteemed place to be. Mm -hmm. It really is, you know. But we have to verbalize. Don't you think Jesus loves to hear? I trust you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I trust. One of my buddies said that... um, she kind of got into this habit that whenever uh, something would go wrong, she'd just stop what she was doing. She would look up and say, I trust you, Lord. 
Wow. You think she didn't go move quickly mm -hmm. through that problem? Yeah. You know, I think a lot of times I have this one friend and she's got this problem right now and she just keeps struggling with it and struggling with it. And I, I, I can't, you know, I'm praying for her and I'm standing with her, but I can't help to think, what is it does she need to learn that she's not learned yet through this? Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes I believe in my own self, problems have lingered they have stayed they have repeated themselves over and over because laura ain't learned the lesson yet because this lady maybe her and her family has some great lesson from god that they need to pick up that they need to learn that they need to master and until they do this problem will stay ongoing mm -hmm. and you know what another thing give thanks in all things have you thanked God for your problems? Woo! Say what? Let me say that again. Have you thanked God for your problems? Have you thanked God for that, that backache, for that lost job, for that stock market crash that happened in your life, for, for um, that neighbor coming against you? For Have you thanked God for your problems? Sometimes I believe that's key. I really do mm -hmm. in order to overcome your problems, to zoom through them more quickly, to understand, hey, oh my goodness, problems is often the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to us. Because without problems, Mark, we'd be spoiled, rotten, no good for nothing, That's wouldn't true. we? That's true. Yeah, we don't realize, you know, the how we, how our... How good we have things in life. It's true. And some of the problems other people have, ours could be minute. Yes. And, you know, we live in such a materialistic world today mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. put things in life first when we don't put God first in our yes, life. Yes. Yeah, I think true. we're all guilty of that at some point in time. We are. And, you know, looking at Americans and looking at American kids, I know I've told this commercial before, but there was this commercial where there's this little red-headed, chubby American boy, and he's playing video games in the back room, and he's got his little feet, you know, propped up on the desk, and he's got this grape soda, you know, sitting there, and, and it's empty. And so he calls. <laughs> hey, Graham, can you bring me another grape soda? And then you see this about 110 year old lady scooting along in the back room, heading to the kitchen to bring that kid another, another grape soda. soda. It, it makes you laugh and mm -hmm. then it makes you want to puke all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Isn't it the truth? It's true. It's true. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, even us, we're texting, you know, can you bring some toilet paper to the bathroom? Or, yeah. you know, mom, can you, you know, can you come here and help me get this off my shelf? We are texting in our house. It's a crying shame. It is. Yeah. When really we were being is. vocal and remember yelling, hey, <laughs> I need this. Can you come here? Can you bring it? But yeah, you're right. We are texting and we could be sitting right next to each other or in a I room away. Know. Yeah, and it is sad. It, it, it really, really is. is. Yeah. I mean, it really, how far we've come. Sure, sure. Um, but anyway, witnessing is another mouth resolution. Um, witnessing, witnessing, telling what God has done, and even reminding yourself. I can remember things that God has done for me that was just absolutely amazing. And sometimes I like to tell mm -hmm. myself that story again. Sure. Remind myself. Singing praise, Mark. Doesn't that do a lot for our soul mm -hmm. is to start singing praises. And, and when you sing these praise songs, don't just sing them. Say, God, this is for you. I'm singing this song for you. And just start belting out a praise song that you heard on Sunday. We did, um, we did old hymns. Oh, yeah. Tina Ilberry's group and Rod Dial, they did hymns. And I'm telling you what, they rocked them out of this world. Good. Unclouded Good. day, yeah. I'll fly away. And you could tell, you could feel the feeling in the room. These people weren't just singing. They were singing to God. They were singing with their whole heart, with their whole mind, their whole soul. And there was something about it that I, I, I tried to videotape one of the songs and I put it on Facebook. It's good, but it just doesn't even do it justice. When you are with a group of believers, there's a feeling in the room. Mm -hmm. 
It really is. And when you're singing God's word and you're really meaning it, there's just something about it that cannot be explained. Confessing scriptures, and I've just got one more. Uh, Confessing scriptures. You know, God wants to hear his word in your mouth. And when you start confessing, and I confess Psalm 91 all the time, he who dwells in the shelter of the most, I will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And then, I, you know, the parts that I really speaks to me about, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right, but it shall not come near my home. It shall not come come here near my children or my children's school or my husband's work or my siblings, my parents. I mean, I'm calling it out. I'm calling it out. I'm calling people's names out. And sometimes I just say, Lord, I pray Psalms 91 over my whole family, Mm -hmm. all of them, Tom's whole family, all of us, dear God, our churches. I'm just calling it out. Lord, he wants to hear us confessing his word, praying his word back to him. And then another thing that is a wonderful, positive thing we can do with our mouth is encouraging others. Don't you get um, don't you get something moving? Don't you, Mark, yeah, when you when encourage you're others? Encur- yeah, when you're, when you're encouraged by someone else, it makes you feel good. Yes. And it gives you a sense of oh, stability, so yes, to speak. That you does. know that you're doing the right thing because of those encouraging words. Yes. And that just causes you to build even further upon that. Yes, it does. You grow yeah. when you are speaking words over somebody. When you are exhorting someone else, when you are encouraging and uplifting someone else, it does something mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really does. So why do we hang on this uh, cussing or speaking doubt or criticism, uh, self-accusations, verbal abuse, critical remarks, judging others? Why do we hang on that? That that drags us down. That just throws our own two feet in a big s- bunch of mud mm-hmm. when we could be praising God and fervently praying and verbalizing trust, witnessing, singing praises, confessing scriptures, encouraging others. I want to encourage you, and I know we need to go to a break, go on a mouth fast. I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. going to do it. It's a challenge. It yeah. is a challenge, and I love challenges. Yeah, those are good. And okay. I think, you know, if you can do a mouth, or if you can do a food fast, yes, you can do a mouth fast. You can. Yeah, you can. That's a great idea, yeah, Mark. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, you know, that's a good one. A mouth fast. I it like that. It is. I do too. Yeah, yeah. Never heard of that before. But hey, let's encourage one another to do it and see how happy your home could be sure. if you just shut your mouth. And, and and the thing is too, look at your attitude. Yes. Uh, it'll change your attitude as well. It will. Yeah. And, and look how much better yeah. your day will. Yeah, and it'll build you up too. It'll build you up. That's right. Yep, we're going to come back with Laura in a moment continue on mm-hmm. Psalm 91 here on the Vine Morning Show. We'll do that coming back in just a few moments. Time now for Voice of the Martyrs, underwritten by the Tin Shed. They're located in Wayne City. <laughs> and 90.9 The Vine is thankful for the underwriting support of the Tin Shed in Wayne City. They are your source for primitive, country, and home decor in a wide selection to meet your decorating needs. The Tin Shed is located at 701 West Robinson in Wayne City, and their phone number is 895-2155. Hi, I'm Todd Nettleton, and this is the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. 68-year-old Sonija lay injured, unable to move. Other bodies were strewn across the Tajikistan church floor. It was a massacre. Gasping for breath, Sonija saw her open, blood-stained Bible in the rubble. The verse she had circled just moments before the bomb exploded jumped from the page. It read, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. A few days after that attack by radical Muslims, Sonija died. Like Sonija, we need not fear death, for to live is Christ and to die is gain. I will not let my brothers and sisters suffer in silence, nor will I let them serve alone. To join me in prayer for persecuted Christians, go to vomradio.net. Pointing the way to the truth and the life local Christian radio.
Memorial Hospital and Horizon Healthcare appreciate your friendship and loyalty to Fairfield Memorial Hospital you have extended through the years. Everyone at Fairfield Memorial Hospital and Horizon Healthcare pledge to continue to earn your confidence and trust. From Catherine Bunning Williams and employees, best wishes and many blessings this holiday season. From Fairfield Memorial Hospital and Horizon Healthcare. Merry Christmas from your friends at Napa in McLeansboro. Their phone number is 643-4386. They would like to wish you a safe and memorable holiday season. Merry Christmas from your friends at Napa in McLeansboro. Hi, this is Melissa Garrison inviting you to join me for Reflections of Hope, a new daily devotional program Monday through Friday here on The Vine. During Reflections of Hope, we'll apply God's Word to our everyday lives. We all need encouragement and to be strengthened in our faith. So why don't you join me twice daily for Reflections of Hope, right here on Local Christian Radio, 90.9 The Vine. Reflections of Hope with Melissa Garrison at 10.05 a.m. and at 1.05 p.m. here on Real Life Radio. Time right now for Hope Out Loud with a member of the Barrick family. And this morning it's underwritten by Monroe Accounting. They're located in McLeansburg. Real Life Radio Foundation is blessed by the generosity of Monroe Accounting in McLeansboro. They specialize in a full line of accounting services for businesses, individuals, and farms, including tax preparation, payroll preparation, quarterly sales taxes, and more. Their office is located at 102 East Market Street in downtown McLeansboro with experience and knowledge to serve your needs. Their phone number is 643-3993. Monroe Accounting in McLeansboro, a proud supporter of 90.9 and 105.5 The Vine. Linda Barrick with today's Hope Out Loud. Jesus' disciples were on a boat in the middle of a stormy sea when they saw someone coming towards them, walking on the water. They thought it was a ghost, and they were terrified. But then they heard Jesus call out to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Now the storm was still raging, but the presence of Jesus was their comfort. 
So if you're facing a storm today, remember that peace doesn't come from escaping the hard times. Peace comes from the presence of our Savior. Remember, He is walking with you through the storm. Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us in every trial. Amen. For more hope and encouragement, go to HopeOutloud.com. More music and ministry for Fairfield, Benton, and Mount Vernon. The Vibe. We welcome you back on a Monday morning. And again, thanks for tuning in to 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. And uh, if you're watching on our live video stream this morning, our in-studio camera on our website at wvyn.org. Thanks for tuning in this morning. And Laura, we've been talking about uh, many things out of Psalm 91. And, you know, we, we were talking on the air and we've talked off the air. Yes. You know, this is the time of the year where people make resolutions. Mm-hmm. Okay, especially they want to start off the new year. All right. Well, let's start before that. You yes. know, this is the holiday season. We just came out of Thanksgiving. Now we're into the Christmas season. And uh, 
We're not telling you to give up food, but let's <laughs> give up what we say with our mouths, mouth yes. fast. Yes. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a I great do. challenge. I do too. Mm-hmm. And I, I, th- I think you know I'm going to do it. Yes. You know, uh, you know we live in a we live in a basically a negative world. Yes, we do. And to build our strength and remain positive. Uh huh. Watch what you say. Yes. It's very easy. Watch We're all guilty. We're all guilty of, of things that come out of our mouth that shouldn't yeah. come out of our mouth. Right. But I think if we watch what we say, pray diligently about God, give me the strength to yes. help me watch and refrain from what I say, whether it, it's... You're, you're hurting someone in opinion. We're very, we're, yes. we're also an opinionated oh, world. Oh my, that one hits a nerve, oh, yeah, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, let's let's do a mouth fast. Let's I, do and it. I think it will make us as individuals stronger. Yes, I do too. And you know, kind of like what you said, this is a real critical time mm-hmm. for a lot of people, and it could be a good time. And a peaceful time. Sure. Or it could be very unpeaceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And fights break out, arguments, silly stuff. Well, she said this to me, and he said that to me, and oh my, it's garbage, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It It is. It really is. You know, and I think it's a challenge that. Uh, we both offer to our listeners yes, out there right. to do it, and and yes. and within a week, see when we come back next win- Monday, yes. we'll see how good oh we my. we do, and oh just practice it and see how yes. good you do. Yes, yeah. I'm going to do a 24 hour where I really I'm going to watch myself close. Mm-hmm. I think for me that's going to be a big eye opener. Is to go on a 24 hour. I mean. Now, even if I I don't like that color, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, well, it's really not my favorite. Mm-hmm. You know, even trying to think of something positive to draw from something that I don't even like. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to go on a real harsh 24-hour just to see how bad I am. Well, you know, when you stop and you think about that, it it just evolves everything that, you know, that we have in our daily life um you know you know we're out on the road a lot we, someone may make you mad when you're out on the road yes. driving yes. road rage um you might not like what what your spouse is going to fix for supper tonight right don't right. frown and right. just say mm, that looks good i'm going <laughs> to enjoy that you know it, 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 but it does it involves all of our daily walk in life, it you know, like does. the weather today. Oh, it, just hey, it's a beautiful day outside. Yes, that's right. Just think positive. That's Th- positive right. thoughts, and you'll never fail. On that's that. right. And you know, doesn't it take 21 days to create a new habit? Sure, it really yeah. does. And we still have 21 days plus before Christmas. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. You've really thrown a a big challenge well, I, out. I, I, I mean, it, is, it is a big challenge when you stop and think. I think it's more tough than fasting from food. I do too. I yeah. do too. Because, you know, whenever you whenever you get hungry, you know, if you're starting to walk to the fridge, oh, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've pledged myself not to do that. But your mouth, you can shoot out a, a zinger in about two seconds Exactly. And have to grab hold of it, and oh my! Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is where your brain's got to overrule your mouth. Absolutely, <laughs> you gotta, you've got to think ahead. All right, think ahead and oh just be goodness. focused. So a yeah. whole week, you're wanting me to really, you're gonna, you're gonna work I'm, real hard. I'm gonna this work next hard. Week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna work really hard. All right, Tom and Sherry. Yeah. You're hold off us limits. Accountable. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, they're off limits to, to trip us up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No to, cheating. No cheating. <laughs> you can't make us. You can't hit our hot buttons, right? This is a this is a perfect time, and we've talked about this before. You know, if you want to do this, whether you, you, yeah, you need to let your spouse know you're doing it. Accountability partner. Yes. Make them hold you accountable for what you're you say. Right, Mark. You're right. Oh, that's good. So you know, hey, Psalms 91 has has drifted, but look where it's come. This is good. But the thing is, you could tie Psalm 91 into this it's as true. well because this is protection over your life, yep. over the words you say, and you just yeah. read that constantly, constantly. Just pick it up every day, read it, read yes. it, read it, and see how stronger you get. It's true. And you know what, Mark? I bet you in a week from now, we both will be happier people. I think so. 
Really? I think so. I'm not that we're not happy. No, but, no. Know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean Happier in that aspect people. of it. And you know, I told Mark off air, it's almost a relief in a way because uh, pride causes mm-hmm. crazy arguments, sure, doesn't it? Sure, sure, absolutely. And feeling like you got to prove yourself mm-hmm. and you got to be right and and uh, you got to show them how the cat ate the cabbage and mm-hmm. you got to prove it. And you know, it kind of takes takes the pressure off. I don't have to prove myself this mm-hmm. week. I've obligated to Mark that I'm going to watch my mouth, Mm -hmm. and you know I and to you, all of you that are listening, and it kind of takes the pressure off of us feeling like we've got to be right, sure, got to prove ourselves, got to defend ourselves, and Mm -hmm. and you know a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, again, we were talking about this is the perfect time of the year where you know a lot of things people dread Christmas. Yes, they do. They they dread the holidays, Mm -hmm. and for many reasons, and I understand that. Yeah. But, you know, see how thinking on a positive, mouth fasting, thinking on a positive, yes. positive mind thought, see how stronger that will make you as we go on and get closer to Christmas. Absolutely. And you may love the holiday. You might. You may love the holiday you when you usually dread it at this time. Absolutely. And, you know, Satan, um, he likes to use your mouth. He likes to use our tongues. He likes to use our words um, against other people and against ourselves. And I think this could be really transforming. I really think this could be a big thing in the workplace uh, to customers, to people that we live by, to our children, our spouses, our parents, whatever we're struggling with. This could be a life changer. And you know what? This could catch on. So, you know, you could talk to your friend or your family, say, hey, I've been listening to the Vine, and they're encouraging us uh, the month of December, what have you, to go on a mouth fast and really watch every word that flies out of your mouth and every ill thing and even our thoughts, because Mm -hmm. that's where it starts, isn't it, Mark? Sure, sure, that's exactly right. Starts with our thoughts and kind of retraining Mm -hmm. ourselves and retraining ourselves with Psalms 91 to, to grab that chapter you know, it, it doesn't just belong to a few. It belongs to us all. And we need to grab hold of that and, and God's Word and just soak it deep into our bones and believe it that it's there waiting for us to grab hold of. So anyway, well, Mark, that's good stuff. I've, yeah. I've, I've got a few stories I could wait if you want me to wait. Are we getting close to time? Go ahead. Go ahead and okay. tell a couple. Yes. All right. Well, these are just, just yeah. to impress you with Psalm 91 a little bit. I'll tell this quick story. Um, This lady named Joanne was in a Bible study group that was studying Psalm 91 and the four categories of evil, which remember uh, terror, arrows, pestilence, and destruction. And you might think, well, what is that? What, What exactly is terror? Well, she put in her explanation evil that comes through what another person can do to us, like robbery, murder, rape, terrorism, kidnapping, etc. Arrows would be like assignments deliberately sent by Satan himself to wound us. Pestilence would be deadly diseases. Destruction would be natural disasters like tor- tornadoes, floods, um, car wrecks, uh, hurricanes, things kind of such in that category. Well, she said it was several weeks later that a man forced this lady that was in the Bible study, forced Joanne's car off the road one night and jerked her out of the car with full intentions of rape. She said that her knee-jerk reaction, and it would be with any of us, would be to scream. She screamed at the top of her lungs for help, and to no avail, nothing happened. And as he was ripping off her clothing, the words of Psalms 91 came back to her. You will not be afraid of the terror of night. It will not approach you. She quit screaming for help and started screaming started quoting that promise over and over suddenly this man throws her down and he's mad he's angry he shouts at her i would get a religious freak and he took off in his car and didn't carry out the act any further wow she later told me that all of her screaming was no deterrent but the moment she began declaring her covenant promise he left that's powerful, mm-hmm, Mark. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Start quoting scripture. And I've heard that before. Different people will have somebody just fly up on them and they just start quoting scripture out loud. And I'm declaring I'm a child of God and you are not going to do this to me. And they leave. 
that one lady that owned the store. This guy came up with a gun, was going to rob her. That's right, yeah. <laughs> She started declaring the word of God, and mm-hmm. and Jesus Christ of Nazarene, Nazarene is um, the Lord over me, and you are not going to do this. And I declare mm-hmm. this in the name of Yeshua. And I don't know what all she said, but he he just kind of looked at her, kind of puzzled, and he leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like she spoke her, she spoke a protection over her. She did her life at that point in time. Over her life because she could have lost it. They she could have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And wasn't it War Room? They were having a bowl of ice cream, and didn't she yeah. tell that that um, guy that was going to steal their purse? I think she was speaking mm-hmm. the Lord's words over, to him. Over him, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's pretty bold. Would you think of it at the time? I don't know, but I pray to God that we would. Mm-hmm. That we would mm-hmm. think to declare his scriptures sure. over us in, in a very moment. Of, we was talking last week about Sandra Kennedy, and she was in this terrible wreck. I mean, this big semi or something comes mm-hmm. for him, and she said, I grabbed hold. She goes, I'm sorry to say I got so excited about the story I was telling my friend. I forgot to even put my seatbelt on. But she says, I grabbed hold of the car, and I screamed, Yeshua! She just started screaming, screaming. Jesus' his name, and she came out without a scratch. Wow. Yeah. So you yeah. know what? God's word is powerful. It's very powerful. Powerful. Very and powerful. Psalm 91 is powerful. And I encourage you, look it up, memorize it, put it on the walls of your mirror or the walls of your house or, or get a mat or a coffee cup or whatever you've got to do. Put it on your refrigerator. It, it has got to be in your home because it is a major, major yes. thing it to sure stand on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll come back with Laura in a moment and wrap it up here on the Vine Morning mm-hmm. Show. And her program, Keeping Watch, is coming up. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Coming up right here on The Vine. Hi, this is Misty from the Gray Area Boutique in Fairfield. Our phone number is 618-302-7379. We'd like to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Everyone at the offices of Draper Insurance in Dahlgren, Illinois, would like to wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Wishing you a holiday filled with peace and love and a new year rich with blessings. Merry Christmas from Chris, Christy, and Kathy at Conard Financial Group at 510 West Delaware in Fairfield. Hi, this is Jamie from Uniquely Rustique in Fairfield. We'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. Merry Christmas from Uniquely Rustique. Real Life Radio is grateful for the underwriting support of Taylor Flooring in Mount Vernon. Located at 328 Main Street in Mount Vernon, Taylor Flooring specializes in the sales, service, and installation of top brands such as Mohawk, Southwind, and LW Mountain. 100% locally owned and operated by Mark and Sherry Taylor, Taylor Flooring in Mount Vernon has your flooring needs covered. Their phone number is 315-6004. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is Keeping Watch with Laura Greathouse. Hosea 4, 1 through 3. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish, with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. I am looking at a mass animal death list, and it is lengthy. I want to read just a few. Masses of dead fish wash ashore at a reservoir in China. 22,000 hens dead due to the avian flu in the Netherlands. 60,000 dead fish, a mystery in Italy. Large fish die in Ohio in America. Large fish die in South Africa. 21 pelicans found dead due to a bird flu in Bulgaria. Thousands of fish have died in Vietnam. 12 whales die in Australia. 80 tons of fish die in Colombia. 
1,500 cattle dead due to drought in Colombia. Hundreds of ducks and other birds and eels dead due to disease in New Zealand. This list just goes on and on. For several years now, animals have been strangely dying on farms, washing up on the shore and falling out of the sky. But the most alarming point to this list that I have read today is this. All of these deaths have occurred in March of 2015. This has been Keeping Watch with Laura Greathouse, heard twice daily on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. And before we wrap things up here this morning on the Vine Morning Show, uh, Lori, you got another uh, story you want to tell yeah, us? Yeah, in this yeah. Psalm 91 book, it, it talks about another time that, that that scripture was used, and it's just profound. There was this lady, and she said her and her husband lived 12 miles out in the country, and she said she was surprised one day by a young man that pulled up in an old van, supposedly lost, asking for a drink of water. And she was going to help him. He pulls a gun, drags her into, her, into his car, and he wraps her up with duct tape and puts a, a cover over her head, and off they go. She said, I had no idea where they went. Mm-hmm. She said, I know we crossed over railroad tracks. And, and so they ended up stuffing her in this place, um, in this old bathroom, and they handcuffed her to the pipes. Well, I kind of wonder if the people weren't wealthy. Sure. Because um, she heard them talking and, and they were going to get ransom money from the husband that was in Texas. And, and so anyhow, she starts quoting the promises of Psalm 91, singing hymns and thanking God while she is duct taped with something over her head and she's handcuffed to bathroom pipes. And she said... She started thinking about Psalm 91:15. In your day of trouble, call upon me and I will answer. And she said, I started praying, Lord, I am calling on you. <laughs> I can't do this, but you can. Show me a way to get loose. And she said, for the first time, I noticed a tiny pipe coming from the back of the sink. And she said, I have no idea how I broke it. But Mm. even the FBI agent couldn't believe how she broke it. But she got loose. She started walking for 12 miles. She comes to this house. Nobody was home, but the front door was unlocked. And she said, later I found out that that door is never unlocked. They just forgot it. Mm -hmm. And she was able to go in and call the sheriff. and. And, but she said she was calling out to God, thanking him and quoting his scripture of Psalm 91. And she got out without Isn't that amazing? a scratch. Wow. Isn't wow. that great? That is great. Another uh, Again, that's God's protection over her. It is. Just because she quoted Psalm 91. She was, Isn't that she awesome? Was calling on that scripture and, yeah. and God's word. And, yeah. and yeah. so anyhow, and I also want to encourage everybody Make you some little thing out of bright markers that mm-hmm. says 90.9 the vine mouth fast and put that on your refrigerator and you join with Mark and me and watch your mouth. Watch your mouth this week. And we're going to talk about this again on Monday. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we're going to have some experiences and some stories to tell, Mark. <laughs> I, I'm sure we will. I, you know, I'll try to document everything. And yeah. if I mess up, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. But yes, no, I, I'm going to do my best. Yes, I really am. me too. I think, I think we can do it. I really do. I, I think do it's too. a great challenge. I think For us, I think it's great for all our listeners, anyone in general that wants to jump I on board. Too. It's a good challenge. It really is. And when you feel like screaming or yelling or or saying some things that you shouldn't, you know, just just, um, start singing. Mm -hmm. Start praising. Say some scriptures. You know, say something positive. And if somebody curses you to your face, just smile and say, I wish I could say something back to you, but I'm doing a mouth fast with (laughs) 90.9 The Vine, and I can't. So (laughs) you're lucky. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yeah, let's try this. This is a a fun thing. But one thing before I... um, Go. I would sure. like to mention we are having a fundraiser. Um, many of you are friends and family of Alicia Wilkie, and she passed away back in July. And this is very hard for me to say, um, but it was very, it was very shocking. And there was, you know, she didn't have anything saved or any funeral insurance. And there's a big bill, 
and UE Funeral Home's been great. There's not been any problems, but um, my my best buddy, Marianne, is her sister, and her and her husband, you know, they have this burden on them. Sure. And there's many people that's jumped in. Brenda Torres and different ones are um, uh, Laura Knapp is uh, uh, CAP. Maybe it's CAP, K-A-P-P. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the ones that's kind of orchestrating this. And if you would like to get a hold of Brenda Torres or Laura CAP, uh, Brenda's number is 231-4403. And Laura's number is 731 731- Eight one six four. I'll say that again. Brenda's number is two three one four four zero three, and Laura's number is seven three one eight one six four. And on Saturday from twelve to three at uh, Tim Reynolds Church, Mount Vernon Baptist Temple, they're going to have a chili and dessert and drink for seven dollars. A silent auction, um, a fifty fifty raffle, trying to help get some funeral expenses taken sure. care of. So if any of you could drop by, it'd be a great, nice, warm meal. Uh, mm-hmm. Come all afternoon. I'm sure there's going to be some great pies and cakes and wonderful things, and it's really a good cause. Um, you know, many hands makes life work. That's right. And if we all bind together when there's a need, um, there's different ones, you know, if there's um, been a fire or, or uh, you know, some off work or sickness or whatever, um, even in this circumstance, they need our help. They need our help. They, they really sure do. do. Yeah. So if you could come or if you could just send a little donation, we would appreciate yeah. it greatly. Yeah. It would mean a lot. Really yeah. would. And we'll be talking about this throughout the week and I'll mention okay. it each morning again. And all that's right. Saturday, December 3rd. This Saturday, 12 to 3 p.m. at Mount Vernon Baptist, 10th yes. late 17 Woodland Drive in Mount Vernon. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for all coming right. in, all right? Okay, thanks, and, buddy. And uh, keep uh, your my accountability all partner right, buddy. on, on our mouth fast. We'll keep my mouth shut this all week. All right, <laughs> sounds good. We'll, we, we can do it, I know. We can. We can do it. All right, thanks for coming in. I'll Thank see you next you. Monday. All right. All right. All right. Hey, uh, Pastor Steve Upchurch in the Rock yes. Church in Centralia, his sermon tonight at 8 mm-hmm. o'clock right here on 105.5 and 90.9. The vine, and we do have rain in the forecast today. Or the uh, rain, uh, you know, periods of rain, thunder possible, and depending on where you live in southern Illinois, rain may uh, reach one inch. And 56 will be the high today, and then uh, cloudy skies tomorrow. 63 clear on Wednesday, 50, and then Thursday, December the first, clear skies and a high of 46. All right. Jenny Lee is next with the overflow. She'll have that from 10 to 2. And then Jimmy, the afternoon matinee. And then Brian with Soul Shine on a Monday. Uh, that's at 6. And then don't forget Pastor Steve Up Church tonight, the Rock Church in Centralia. That is tonight at 8 o'clock here on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. Have a great day, everyone. Always remember, read Scripture daily and stay focused on God and His Word. Jenny Lee coming up next with the overflow right here at The Vine. <laughs>